Yo, fellas, total game changer for you today. It's gonna make you even more handsome somehow. I'm talking smaller pore size, I'm talking getting rid of acne scars, more hair on your head, a fuller beard, getting rid of any dark marks on your skin, making you look fuller, more healthy, less fine lines, less wrinkles, like most any benefit you could think of for your skin, this is gonna handle. Today we're talking about microneedling. I'm gonna walk you through exactly what this helps with and step by step how to do it and actually show you how to do it. I'm Angel, I'm a cosmetic chemist specifically focusing on men's care products. Let's get right into it. All right, y'all, I'm so hyped to talk about this. I've been doing it for a while. It's like the fountain of youth. It has so many awesome benefits in so many different areas, and it is so easy to do. It's micropunctures that happen to the skin, and when you get these little tiny wounds in the skin that don't cause any real issues, it sends a signal to like, yo, let's wake up, let's make some collagen and make the skin look nice and healthy. So the outside of your skin is called the epidermis. The needle goes in and penetrates to the dermis, which causes pinpoint bleeding. The dermis is about 0.5 millimeters to about a millimeter deep, depending on the person and the area of your face that we're talking about. But when you get that pinpoint bleeding, that is when you're getting really good stimulation that's gonna cause collagen to be released. And now benefits wise, it helps with so many things. So just the needling itself helps with the delivery of certain ingredients. So Let's say that you're using it with minoxidil for more hair growth. You're gonna get two to three X, potentially the hair growth on your head, on your eyebrows and your beard, or I guess wherever you wanna get hair growth. But the collagen is gonna help with a lot of great things too. So it'll help with mild acne scars. It's gonna help with any hyperpigmentation you might get. So that's when you get dark marks after acne or when you get a cut or a scrape on your face. It's gonna help even out the skin tone. It's gonna to smooth out any kind of rough texture on the face. It minimizes pore size, it helps with fine lines, wrinkles. And so it's not going to be this miracle thing, but it does quite a bit compared to what you would expect from just applying like a moisturizer to your face. And you'll be pleasantly surprised by the results that you'll get by doing this, you know, three to four times even. So we're gonna talk specifically about a needling device today, but it's very easy to use a derma roller. I'll cover that at some other point. You don't need to spend a lot of money on getting a device. It's just what I personally prefer because it gets the job done quicker and it's really reliable, the depth that you're gonna get on the skin penetration with the needles. So you can use something like a Dr. Pen. I'll have links in the description to check some of these out. Or you could try a uh, Derminator 2 is which I use and what I love. Another good option is if you feel kind of uncomfortable about this, you don't need to just jump right in. You could always get it done professionally one time and just monitor how they're doing it, how your skin receives it. And so after that, you can start doing it on your own because you're gonna have a better idea of how your skin works and how you should be doing it and what it feels like. But is this painful? Guys, we're men, come on, it doesn't hurt. If you've ever got a tattoo, it's less than what it is from getting a tattoo and it's so brief to be able to do this. You can get in and out of doing a session of your entire face in maybe five minutes. So it's something that you could tough out, but you know, if, if maybe you have less pain tolerance, that's okay, fine, I'm not gonna judge. What you can use is you can buy like a lidocaine cream. Again, I'll have the links here, but you can get them right from Amazon. Just put that on your face, wait about 30 minutes for that to kick in, and then you can use that and it'll help out with some of the pain. A few safety pointers here and some tips, and if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. If you have active acne, you wanna avoid that. You don't wanna spread around the bacteria. If you have melasma, if you have, um, like psoriasis or eczema, and then this will be a situation that you don't wanna use this. You wanna be careful with the needling depth. There are great benefits to go into some deeper depths, depending on what we're talking about and on what part of the body and what issue we're trying to solve. Because if we're talking about like stretch marks on the thigh, that's gonna use a very deep type of um, depth, like probably 2.5 millimeters, whereas you definitely don't wanna do that on your face, that's gonna be way too deep. And something you wanna be careful about is be very gentle, don't even really go around the bottom part of your chin or on your neck so you have a nerve around here and right here it, you do have to go quite deep to get there it's about three to five millimeters which is going to be beyond the scope of the device but if you were you know pushing and jamming in you could potentially hit that nerve which is going to cause issues and you definitely don't want to do that so we won't be going anywhere close to that depth but just kind of an fyi for safety last thing before the walk do please like subscribe drop a comment below i love to answer any questions to be able to help you out all right, here's how you go about microneedling. So you wanna make sure that all of your surfaces are gonna be clean from the actual needling device to the tops of your containers for all of the products that you're gonna be using. And to start with, you'll wanna have your face nice and clean. I took a shower, so I have my hair, my scalp is clean, everything is clean. So I'm going to first um, get my hair out of the way. You can use a headband or something, I just use a hat to show the skin, the forehead and whatnot. You're gonna to wanna to put on some gloves. 
And it's really important to make sure that you're keeping things very clean because that's gonna minimize the chances of any adverse things going on. Not that it happens frequently, but it is something that can definitely happen. Um, to go the extra mile after you clean your face, take an alcohol swab and swab on the skin. I know you've probably heard that alcohol is no good for the skin, but it's actually, you know, it's what doctors use to clean up the skin so that you don't get infections. And it's just gonna potentially dry out the skin, which won't matter because we're gonna be putting on hyaluronic acid in a second anyways. So let's do that. Let's get nice and prepped. All right. So the way that this device works, you've got the power button right here to turn it on and off. Now, when you turn it on, this will be what you see. Ask between single needle, we're using actually 12 needles if you can see closely in there. And we're gonna set it to, we're gonna say no, no, we're gonna do 12 needles because that affects the depth of this sensor on here. And it's gonna ask you for the timer. You're gonna wanna hit speed because we're not doing it by time and you're gonna click it to fast. And then as soon as you hit this right here, the depth setting, this is what's gonna put it so that it starts up. And so if we adjust that speed again, here's slow, medium, fast, which will be what we're doing. Now for, in order for this to glide properly on the skin, you're gonna to wanna to have some sort of hyaluronic acid that you can have for gliding. Don't just buy anything from the store. You can buy one specifically for microneedling so that it has less ingredients in it. Cause you don't want too many things that, you don't want too many things getting in the skin that shouldn't be in the skin when your pores are gonna be wide open basically. So this is one that I've made that has hyaluronic and copper peptides in it to help with the healing process. But I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna apply this to the side of my face that I'm gonna be needling first. And I'm gonna to try to do this on the camera. I've never done it this way, so we'll see how it turns out. But I'm gonna do exactly what I just said. I'm gonna set it too fast. And for the depth, let's turn this off real quick. You have depth all the way up to 0.25, or 2.5 millimeters. And you really won't be doing 2.5 millimeters in your face. Definitely don't do that. Um, what's typically recommended safe is up to 0.5 millimeters. I actually do probably about, I think 1.5 on the face. Uh, different depths for different areas, but that's because I'm very experienced with doing this and I know what my skin is used to. You can go get this done professionally or something if you want to see what it's like first before diving into this. But I'm going to start off at a depth of about one. It starts with my cheek area. And then we're going to go in circular motions and lines back and forth. So we're going to start up here. Actually, already getting a little bit of drag. So I'm add more serum to the skin. And we're gonna up the depth to 1.25 for the cheek area, the, the mid to lower cheek, because my skin is thicker there. And ideally, I want to get just to the point of pinpoint bleeding, because that means that the dermis has been penetrated, and that's when you're getting all of the benefits of fibroblasts being stimulated and collagen is starting to be generated as a result. All right, that's one side, we're gonna do the other. Start again. Right now I'm gonna get the nose. The nose has much thinner skin. Um, so I actually only do, I do about 0.5 on the sides and then I do 0.25 on this ridge here. Otherwise it <laughs> definitely is no good. Now, if you're gonna do the eye area, you wanna be very careful. You can see the like pinpoint bleeding that I've got going on. But if you wanna do the eye area, you wanna be extremely careful because the eyelid skin is very, very thin. So definitely don't do anything up here. Um, even you shouldn't even do anything here. Um, try to get, if you're gonna do it, like right under it, if you're gonna do it, but do it with very small amount, like 0.25 on depth. Get 
the eyebrows. Ooh, eyebrows don't feel good. And I usually end up having to sneeze when I do this. <coughs> oh, there it is. Okay, let's get the forehead here. Now lastly, the forehead. So my forehead's really messed up from a new product breaking me out. Um, so ideally when you're doing this, you wanna avoid any active acne or like scabs or any disgustingness that you might have on your skin so that you don't get that on the needle and then spread it everywhere. Most everything I have here is actually just hyperpigmentation that's left over and there's really nothing in there. So I'm gonna actually do the whole forehead. But I usually do this one at about um, anywhere from 0.5 to about 0.75. Okay, and I'm getting really sneezy, but the last part that we're gonna do is the hairline. And for this, I like to do about 1.5. Uh, that is good depth for me. It does start to feel a little painful at that depth, but there's really good studies around it. There's no like official what's the best depth to use, but that's the one that I typically use for my hairline. Oh yeah, that feels good. Baby. <sighs> okay, that's it. This is what we look like up close. You can see I've got a little bleeding that goes on. Pinpoint bleeding. And then I'll look to see if there's any spots that I might have missed that are a little bit lighter than others. Uh, you'll get kind of a feel for this when you do it more. From here, depending on how bloody my face is, the, I'll usually put distilled water. You could use regular water as well. I just prefer distilled to minimize any unwanted things getting on my skin or in my skin, but usually just do this to kind of clean off some of what I've got on my face. And then I'll start applying the serum. So first I'll put on the Minoxidil. So again, because I'm needling, I'm gonna get better absorption of the minoxidil. So I'm gonna apply it to the facial hairlines as well as my hairline and my eyebrows to improve the growth there. So let's do that. Okay, from here I'm gonna wait a few minutes for this to dry and then I'm gonna put on my copper peptide serum and then my uh, homemade peptide serum and then the Vaseline. Now even though this is stuff that I've made, you can definitely buy this stuff from somewhere so I'll drop links in the description where you can get things like the gliding serum or for a good peptide serum to apply afterwards if that's something that you wanna do. And then to finish everything off, we're gonna get slug life. So take a little bit of Vaseline and apply that around the face. You don't want to use a moisturizer because using a moisturizer um, is going to introduce too many ingredients um, that you don't want to potentially get into your skin at this time where it is um, high irritation potential and it's going to absorb more. So Vaseline won't get absorbed by the skin. It's going to keep it hydrated overnight because when your skin is like this, it's going to lose a lot of hydration really easily. So, on and that's it we're done this is what the after looks like again see close up of the skin close up of the forehead we'll catch you in a second all right so this is what my skin looks like the next morning without having done anything yet or cleansed anything off so i've still got the vaseline on my face and pet fur from my bed, but this is, but you can see, you can see we still have redness that's going on. Um, typically wherever I was doing heavy needling where there's fine lines or wrinkles, the next day they might look a little worse. I had a pimple that started to come out there, so I put a pimple patch on it to gently extract it, but you can see it's red, but if you see a lot of like needle marks, that means that you probably overdid it. Not so much on the depth, but the amount that you were microneedling. I found that if I go over a spot too many times, I start to get these like track marks the next day that stay there and it takes like two to three days for them to go away. But I think I did a good job this time. So my skin will look 
kind of beat up today because I did needle pretty deeply. If you needle at 0.5 depth, you should be pretty good the next day. But at this depth, um, I should be good by tomorrow morning. That about does it guys. I wanna emphasize that cleanliness is key here. You don't wanna just slather random products in your face because they're gonna get more penetration into the skin than what they're intended to. So don't get too experimental or anything like that. In the description below, I'm gonna have tons of links as well as some detailed walkthrough of how to do this, kind of nice and laid out for you. You can do this every three to six weeks. It depends on the depth and how your recovery is. If you're doing lesser depths, then you can get away with doing it say every other week. Uh, if you're doing 0.25, you can do that probably every week. It's up to you. The key is to listen to your skin. If it's feeling really irritated, like chill out and just wait a bit, let your skin barrier not be nice and recovered and healed. That wraps it up. So for more science back tips on men's care and aesthetics, you know where to find me. Be sure to like, subscribe and drop a comment below. Love answering any questions that you might have. Catch you later.